good morning. Welcome to St. Thomas Church Swansea online for this Mothering Sunday 2021. It's great to be with you. My name's Steve, I'm the vicar, and today we're going to have uh, various different um, contributions from members of our church. Uh, but it's so good that you're with us today on Mothering Sunday. Uh, Mothering Sunday began as a tradition where workers uh, and those uh, labourers in the fields, etc., were given the day off to return to their mother church. And many would go to the parish church or to the cathedral. And uh, on the way or on the way home, uh, children would get flowers and give them to their mothers. And obviously, uh, things have grown from that. So however you're spending today, whether today is a day of joy or a day of sadness or reflection, uh, just know that we're praying for you uh, today. And uh, hopefully at some point today uh, on Sunday, you'll get a visit with a small gift from our church. If you're not currently signed up to our newsletter, do make sure you do that. There's lots of things going to be coming up soon, but more about that after we spend some time in worship together. So I'm just going to pray and then we will sing some songs together. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, come and meet with us today. Lord Jesus, just in a moment of stillness, we're mindful of where we're falling short, where we're missing the mark, where we're not following your will for our lives. And we just spend a moment now in the presence of God, just asking him to deal with those things in our heart, in our lives, in our mind. Lord Jesus, we come before you, asking for your forgiveness today. Lord Jesus, will you forgive us and set us free for that abundant life that you promise us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us worship together.
This week on Friday, uh, Mark Drakeford announced a further loosening of lockdown uh, in Wales uh, and allowing uh, two uh, couples or, or uh, to gather in um, outside together socially. So if anybody wants to go for a walk, uh, then uh, I would love to accompany you on that. Uh, and uh, we're still waiting further clarification from the church in Wales about what is possible for Easter. But by next weekend, we'll have announced what our plans are for Holy Week and that great celebration of Easter. Do pray for us as a team as we try and make those decisions. If you've got any strong opinions on whether we should gather in person or online, do let us know through our social media, through our chat, through email. Um, we would love to hear from you because we can only use the information that we've got. We continue to pray for the vaccine rollout. Uh, many of you have had your first doses, some have had your second. Uh, Ryan in the Vicarage was the first Vicarage member to have his vaccine this week. And that's all great news uh, as we seek to, to create that environment where we can gather again. Uh, this week has been the first week of the team in St Thomas uh, working together in the building. Just to remind you who they all are, Rob is in our kitchen. Eleanor is managing our food bank and uh, surplus food uh, and will have a wider profile as people can come back in the building. Debbie continues to do our administration and work for the wider uh, food banks across the city. And Rachel is uh, the operations manager of the church. 
Uh, and of course, uh, Mark, who is our worship and student leader. And most of those you'll hear from in this service today. Like I said, today is Mothering Sunday, and uh, it's a day of mixed emotions, and we want to temper that today. Uh, for some of you watching this today, uh, having children will be something that was long hoped for but never fulfilled. Some of you may be estranged from your children. Some of you may be remembering your own mother who is no longer with us. And our hearts and our prayers are with all of you today. One thing that as a church we are passionate about is that of adoption. Uh, adoption is part of God's terminology. We are adopted when we become Christians into God's family. We become heirs to his kingdom. And an organisation called Home for Good works with prospective uh, adopters uh, and particularly champions the role of churches in adopting children. And I'd like to share this video from them today. If you would like any more information about adoption, then do speak to us, do get in touch with us, or check out the Home for Good uh, on the internet. Uh, they're a wonderful um, organisation and friends that I know have adopted uh, children through them. We're now going to be led in our prayers this week by Rachel, our Operations Manager in St Thomas Church. Let's pray together. Father, we come before you on this Mother's Day, one that feels so significant as it comes off the back of a very difficult year. It's been a year where mothers have been stretched to their limits whilst holding their families together. We thank you that you have sustained each and every one of them. May they know they are seen, known and loved. It's also been a year of disappointment where hopes and dreams haven't materialised. We ask you to draw close to the women who find Mother's Day particularly hard. May they know they are seen, known and loved, especially today. And it's been a year of significant pain, loss and grief. We pray for the families who have suffered loss. May they know your comfort and your care. May they know they are seen, known and loved. We also pray for the family of Sarah Everard, who has experienced deep pain and suffering this week. 
May they know your presence in the midst of their trauma and their loss. God, these have been hard days for all of us, but we give you thanks for always being with us, for always meeting our needs, for never leaving us. Today, I ask for your blessing on each of us and grant us your strength and your grace to keep showing up in the name of your precious son, Jesus. This week is uh, an opportunity to hear from Rachel, uh, my wife, our diocesan children and families officer, uh, and she is going to be sharing with us about Mothering Sunday. And also our reading this week is going to be by Catherine. This week's reading is from the first chapter in Luke's Gospel. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped inside her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfil his promises to her. Good morning. It's so wonderful to be with you as we celebrate Mother's Day today. Um, it feels very strange because um, Mother's Day was the first service last year that we didn't have in church. Uh, so we're kind of coming up to that anniversary as well, which brings with it a whole load of mixed emotions. But that's kind of apt in some ways um, because Mother's Day or Mothering Sunday is a service that we mark every year in church. Um, but not everyone finds it easy. It is a day that's full of mixed emotions. And there's lots of reasons why it might be difficult, but it can be a really important opportunity to bring those things before God and ask for him to help us um, as we deal with them. Have a look at the um, Thinking of You video that we watched um, from Home for Good. It really sums up some of those things that might make this day difficult for some of us. It brings those difficulties that a lot of us have with Mother's Day into the open. But we're going to be looking at three Bible women today. These Bible women are really special um, and they can teach us quite a lot about both mothering and about God's love for us, which are really important lessons, whether we're mothers or children or fathers or whoever we are in our church family. Um, they're important lessons for all of us. So our first mother is the wife of a priest. She's described as being righteous before God, very old, not just a bit old, but very old and not able to have a child. Do you know who it might be? It is, of course, Elizabeth, who we hear about at the beginning of Luke um, with her husband, Zechariah, as they're unable to have a child. Now, in biblical times, giving your husband children was the main job of a woman. And if you couldn't have children, it was thought that you had done something wrong. So it was a punishment. You were being punished for your sins by not being given the blessing of children. But the Bible describes Elizabeth as blameless. She had done nothing wrong. There was no reason or explanation as to why she hadn't had a child. Yet she spent her whole life in disgrace amongst the other women, maybe losing friends over the years, both through the um, idea that she was a sinful woman because she didn't have a child. And just naturally, as um, your friends have children, the kind of things that you talk about changing your priorities, um, women naturally drift apart as they come through different phases of their lives. 
So she would have had a hard life um, socially and would have found some, some things very difficult to cope with. But even though her life was hard, Elizabeth and her husband Zechariah still loved God and they stayed faithful to him all the time through those many, many years that they were longing for a child. Now the chances are that we will all suffer at some point and in some way, perhaps with the pain of loss or infertility, perhaps with illness or relationship breakdown, or perhaps with redundancy, rejection, fear or failure. Whatever it is, we can learn something of humility, perseverance and sacrifice from Elizabeth and Zechariah. For Elizabeth, her story went on to result in the birth of a baby, which we hear about in Luke, but things happen in different ways for different people. No two stories are the same. Elizabeth's son was John the Baptist, who was a great prophet in the time of Jesus. But when he was in his early 30s, he was killed, he was beheaded. And we don't know if Elizabeth lived to see what happened to her son, but we do know that when she gave birth, she was full of joy about this child who she thought could, she could never have and was this miracle in front of her. And we know too that all families are full of joy and pain as children grow up. It's a natural part of family life, but that doesn't make it any easier to cope with. So could we be like Elizabeth? holding on to God even when our circumstances are challenging and life hurts? Can we trust through the pain that God has control of our futures and better things are yet to come? Perhaps he has greater challenges for us as part of his plan, which leads us on to our next Bible woman. This woman was just a girl when her story begins. She was engaged to a man who cared for her and would have looked after her. And then she had a visit from an angel and everything changed. Does this sound familiar? It should do because we hear it in the, East, the Christmas story every year. It is of course Mary. God wants Mary for a specific, significant calling, something that will change her life forever and cost her very dearly. To start with, she was scared and confused. We can hear that when she's first talking to the angel. But ultimately, her response to God is faith and courage. In agreeing to have God's son as an unmarried woman, she opened herself up to scorn and ridicule for the rest of her life, which may not have been very long um, if there was a, uh, an inkling that maybe she had not been faithful to Joseph. But aside from that, even through the life of Jesus that we read through the Bible, we hear how she had to travel to an unknown town while heavily pregnant, um, which would have been very uncomfortable, um, to give birth in a dirty stable, which was surely not what she wanted for this miraculous child inside her. She and Joseph then have to leave their home again and live as refugees in Egypt to protect their precious son. And eventually, she, like all mothers, had to trust enough to let Jesus go. And as we know, eventually she ends up watching him be crucified. In following God's call, there will be times when we're challenged by what he asks of us. God won't ask us to do the same thing as Mary. There will only be one Jesus. But whatever he is asking, we can learn from her example of submission, faith and courage. Mary's choice to step into motherhood at that time and in that way affected the rest of her life and the rest of our lives as well. Whatever way someone comes into motherhood, whether the journey is straightforward, complex or a bit of a surprise, it will change everything. Being a mother is so much more than giving birth to a child. There are so many mums who have fostered or adopted their children. There's amazing stepmums in our communities, grannies, aunties and godmothers. And our communities are also full of role models and prayers for the next generation. It's so exciting when you get to know people here to see how many amazing women there are um, in St Thomas and Botanant who are supporting our children. Mary knew from the start that her son was special. But the pain she would go through was prophesied when he was a baby too, not just how um, he was a son of God. She stayed faithful to God, 
following his plan, despite knowing that it wouldn't go easy on her. So could we be like Mary, giving our whole lives to be used by God? Can we stay faithful through the challenges, even when it costs us? Now, this brings us on to our final woman who couldn't be more different to Mary. She had been married for seven years, but her husband died and she was a widow for decades, spending all her time at the temple where she finds peace and purpose in her worship. Do you know her name? It is Anna. When Anna met baby Jesus in the temple, her response was to thank God and share her joy with as many people as possible. Despite the difficult circumstances of her life, Anna had not given in to grief or regret. She didn't remarry after her husband died, but lived a life of hope, believing that God is good. There may be people who you know who have had difficult lives, when life hasn't gone the way they expected, but they've chosen to stay positive and still give thanks to God throughout the difficulties, finding their purpose in him and in him alone. Could we be like Anna, trusting in God even when things go wrong? Can we worship God and find our joy in him in every moment and challenge of our lives? The stories we've heard today remind us that God loves us and wants to use us regardless of our challenges. In the midst of our joy and pain, he is with us. Mother's Day may be a time of joy or it may remind us of things we've lost or never had. But however today makes you feel, be assured that God is with you. Lord Jesus, I just want to pray today for mums and for those who fulfil the role of mums, stepmums, grannies, aunties. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for them today, for their role they have in shaping our lives. We pray for those who today is a difficult day, those who long for children. We thank you for organisations like Home for Good and for those who foster and adopt children throughout our community and city. Lord Jesus, we thank you for those today. We pray for those who have difficult relationships with their mothers. Those where other people have taken on that role. We pray for them today. And Lord Jesus, we pray for the role of your church, for each and every one of us as members of this church family, in our role to be mother to this community, to mother to this city. We pray for each one of us to find our gifts, our skills, our talents and our opportunities to serve you in this city as we seek to nurture people into their relationship with you, their Lord and Saviour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And before we sing our final song today. I'm going to pray for God's blessing. Do keep in touch with us through the phone, through our social media uh, channels, through email, uh, and even write us a letter if you want to. But we'd love to hear from you, as uh, particularly as we try and discern uh, our reopening here in St Thomas. But for now, let me pray for God's blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those who you love and pray for this day and always. Amen.
to see you.